Hi there, uh, this is the first in a series of videos just to get us more familiar with this piece that we're doing, the first piece for our virtual choir. It's called Oh Love, Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go by Elaine Hagenberg. And uh, what you're gonna find as you start working through this song is that it's a very like legato piece. It just uh, carries through and the phrasing is just meant to um, flow, you know, it's, it's just meant to flow from one phrase to the next. And um, so yeah, the, the first couple pages of this are mainly just uh, female vocalists, altos and sopranos. And uh, then it's not until page four at a pickup, or excuse me, uh, bar 25, bar 25, that the tenors come in and then the basses come in. But the sopranos and altos really established for us the melody from the get-go. So I just wanted to look at this a little bit with you. And with these videos, uh, I just want to take the song one chunk at a time and really provide you with just a couple of notes that might help you in your preparation. Uh, truthfully, those videos that you'll find on the resource page that we sent out to you that has the part predominance, um, hopefully you've been able to find those. They're just each a, a different YouTube video, one for soprano, one for alto, and then tenor and bass as well. Uh, four different videos where you can listen through the song, but also pull out the uh, specific part that you're singing and hear that a little bit louder, a little bit clearer. Um, so I'd, I'd commend that resource to you. I think that that's one of the best to start with, just as you learn and, and get familiarized with uh, with the piece, but these videos are less about learning the notes and, and they're more just making a couple of observations about the style of how to approach approach singing this. And the goal is that when you put the notes that you learn, the notes and the rhythms and the pitches, that kind of, um, that piece of it, along with some of these stylistic notes that you'll just feel that much more confident when you get like I am in front of uh, your your camera at home uh, on your phone or whatever device and you sing this to be added to the virtual choir. So I just want to make a few observations on these first few pages and then other videos will be released to you uh, for the other sections of the piece as we go along and we learn this together. So the piece begins with this beautiful uh, rather rubato style of the piano where it's kind of ebbing and flowing and just establishing the theme of the piece and then pick up to beat nine as you'll see the sopranos and altos sing together you sing a uh, piano but it should still be strong you should still uh, be able to sing with confidence and um, and moving the air through uh, and really that first pitch the whole of the first O, um, you want to breathe on that with the space of O, like we talk about in, in choir, that the tall space that you want to sing with is the tall space you want to breathe with, and you want to begin with that, that vowel ready to go right at the pickup. Uh, so give yourself a little bit of time to breathe. You have this lead, on, lead, lead in on the piano. but it begins with that chord rolled out on beat eight, or excuse me, measure eight. And what you'll do there is you can use that space of the measure to, to breathe slowly and then to prepare yourself to come in for that, that first note. And you'll want bright eyes, uh, like we talk about in choir, your, your eyebrows raise a little bit, just a, a smile in your eyes, and then you'll breathe into that O shape and sing it. With the O, the O is really a lead in to love. So the O can be rather light and then you want to land on O and you want to expand on, on each of these. So you notice it goes, O oh, love, O oh, love, O oh, love that will not let and so on. Each of those has those dotted half note rhythms with a lead in on beat four in the quarter note. With that same pattern, you want to shape them relatively similarly with the quarter note leading in a little bit lighter, and then when you sing that dotted uh, half each time, love, you're expanding a little bit and crescendoing just a little bit. But again, it's all within the confines of the piano dynamic. So you'll grow each of those and then, will not let me go. And 
through this whole next section going into bar 15, you want that to just continue to grow and just a light crescendo carrying you through and then soul in the and you can day crescendo just as written there. I give thee back the life I owe that in. That is crescendoing and crescendoing just as it's written there. And then you dig crescendo on depths, its flow may richer, fuller be. So as you sing through that, the dynamics are pretty much given for you. Um, but just those little notes of the lead in note because is helpful, I think. Because uh, you're going to do that again and again. Like the next one, uh, we have the altos leading the way with O oh Choi going into bar 25. Uh, as you go into that, and as uh, men, you're going to kind of follow suit on some of these tenors and basses going into bar 27, you have that same rhythm of O oh Joy. Uh, and then you go, that seeks me through the pain. Uh, that whole business, I think just a lighter O and then crescendoing on joy. A lighter O and crescendoing on love. And doing that each each time can be really really helpful so uh, but other than that the dynamics are are pretty well provided for you so the other thing you want to be mindful of and again this is just a go-to for any choral singing is you want your vowels to be nice and tall right you kind of want to think about each each vowel uh, just dropping the jaw nice and lightly uh, not overdoing it but dropping the jaw making sure that there's this space in your in your head uh, to be able to sing those vowels with an open frame uh, but the and so and not wide you want them to be tall right uh, but the other thing you want to be mindful of not only do you want top tall vowels but you want really crisp and uh, and clear consonants so I think one of the greatest examples is bar 21 and 22 sopranos and altos is when you say rich full be right so I didn't do er with the vowels I, I went for a tall vowel but also my consonants of rich and full be I want those consonants to come through the ch and the f right <laughs> so that we can understand what's being sung but that's a rich text it has the word richer in it rich text and uh, we want to make sure that we get uh, the, the full scope of the, those consonants. So then, uh, again, the altos coming in at bar 25, you'll notice you have lead us in. Yeah, this is when the, uh, the, all the choir's parts come in together and we start kind of dancing with one another. Uh, these O's, uh, that are more elongated tenors and sopranos, you're going to want to milk those for all they are, really slur them and uh, and even almost kind of slide a little bit. And so, and then the sopranos yours goes like that. And so on through going on through there but even sliding around those oh kind of a feel in your brain in your head uh, and keeping those nice and slurred nice and legato is the key again we want all of this to flow like one cohesive thought and then when we seeks me through the pain make sure that those vowels though all of the line comes and just carries from one note to the next really um, really smoothly seeks me through the pain and make sure you have enough uh, gas in the tank to make it through that that whole note there on pain um, especially for our sopranos and altos and then uh, tenors are going to do the oh and joy and so on what i'd encourage you to do is really pay attention on the uh, practice videos that you have that I mentioned before, the part predominant ones, and really pay attention to where they breathe. In other words, where they close the consonants, how they enter back for their, their next upcoming note. They pay clear attention to that and note those in your score and just go through. There's some of these stylistic things that yes, they're going to enhance a lot of it, but um, you can't compete with clear consonants and vowels sung at the same time and ended at the same time. So just be sure, uh, be mindful of that. One of the examples, for example, that's really clearly written is at the bottom of page five, where we all breathe in this that second bar, bar 32. Hearts to thee, 
I trace, right? After the, they've specifically written an eighth note there. It's not as clear in other places. So it'll be helpful to just re remember the, the three ways that you can uh, approach the end of a phrase. Um, typically, you know, you're just going to do a, a clean cutoff, and typically I mark that as just a, I just draw a line right there to remind myself I'm going to actually breathe there, I'm going to stop the sound, I'm going to close the consonant, and uh, I'm going to breathe. The other one is uh, to have no break in the action, and you sing from one phrase to the next without any clear breath or close, closing to the consonant. The one consonant at the end of the word carries to the next word, um, or the end of the syllable to the next syllable. Um, but then there's this in-between, right? We've talked about this. I like to call these lifts um, or separations where in between the two tones, we don't fully take a breath, but we just kind of come off the note a little bit so it's a little bit quieter to leap before we go into the next note. So what you're gonna wanna do, again, listen through your part predominance, listen through the piece, really note which one it is. Is it a clean cutoff? Is it a carryover? So the cutoff, I do like a strike. Uh, the carryover, I do an arrow from one phrase to the next. And then uh, with regard to the, the separation, I'll typically do like a, kind of like a seagull. <laughs> Doop, doop, a little seagull motion and just reminds me that I kind of lift off the note before I come into the next one without completely closing off the sound. So go ahead and listen through those different things, but for now, I think this is, this is helpful enough just to note that this song is meant to be slurred, uh, giving some notes just regarding uh, how to enter into the phrase of the O oh, oh, is lighter and then love we lean into and we crescendo. Uh, and then also just noting how uh, the, the different parts come in together, making sure that we have tall vowels, crisp consonants, these sorts of things. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, don't uh, allow yourself to be discouraged in any way as we go through this. You just allow your confidence to continue to grow as you learn how this song works and learn uh, how you're going to be able to present it when you get your camera in front of you and uh, you sing it. It's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'll see you next time as we pick up uh, with page five and following. Thanks.